We acknowledge the virtual presence of the administrators and teaching staff of the UN-mandated University for Peace and the Ateneo de Manila University and the Asian Peace Builders Scholarship Program Class of 2021. The Ateneo de Manila University and University for Peace collaboration began in 2007 as a dual campus program. Over time, the linkage between the two universities has evolved so that a memorandum of agreement was signed in 2014 recognizing the role of the universities in the education of the APS scholars. Today, we will recognize this partnership in which the Asian Peace Builder Scholarship Program scholars will be conferred a dual degree. The Ateneo de Manila University will confer the degree Master in Transdisciplinary Social Development, while the UN-mandated University for Peace will confer MA degrees from eight programs to 30 Nippon Foundation-funded students of the Asian Peace Builder Scholarship Program, Batch 2021. To welcome everyone to this exercise is Father Roberto C. Yap of the Society of Jesus, President of the Ateneo de Manila University. Mr. Yohi Sasakawa, Chairman of the Nippon Foundation. Mr. Takejo Ogata, President of the Nippon Foundation. Rector Francisco Rojas Aravena of the University for Peace, Dr. Maria Lucy Vilches, Vice President for the Loyola Schools of Ateneo de Manila University, Attorney Dishanti Jayawira, 
founder of the Center for Peace Building and Reconciliation, members of the International Advisory Board, good day and welcome to the closing ceremony of the 14th cohort of the Asian Peace Builders Scholarship Program. On behalf of the Ateneo de Manila University community, I congratulate the 30 scholars of APS 14, representing Cambodia, Indonesia, Japan, Myanmar, Philippines, Sri Lanka, Thailand, and Vietnam, who are among the first to be conferred the university's Master in Transdisciplinary Social Development degree, along with their dual degree from the UN-mandated University for Peace. I applaud your perseverance to complete your studies, despite the challenges that the global COVID-19 pandemic has caused. Much more than simply a health crisis, the pandemic is also an economic and social crisis. It affected and continues to affect all segments of our society, but is especially detrimental to communities that are vulnerable to begin with, including indigenous peoples, refugees and migrants, and those living in poverty, among others. In many parts of the world, it exacerbated already adverse peace and development situations. Your determination to finish the Asian Peace Builders Scholarship Program, therefore, is a beacon of light for all of us. It is indicative of your commitment to peace, a prerequisite for global sustainable development, and gives us hope for the future of our region and the world. We in the Ateneo de Manila are privileged to partner with the University for Peace and the Nippon Foundation in your formation as peace and development professionals. And our best wishes and continuing support will accompany you as you make a positive impact on the lives of our people. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Father Bobby Yap. To share with us the meaning of this ceremony, we have Dr. Francisco Rojas Aravena, Rector of the United Nations Mandated University for Peace. Dear authorities and colleagues, dear student, congratulations. This is an important day for you and your families. Greetings for your efforts in this difficult time. You will start a new cycle in your life. You have the knowledge for help, for creating innovation for a better world. I'd like to express our recognition to the Nippon Foundation. With the support of the Nippon Foundation, you had the opportunity to educate in Manila, and in Costa Rica. And today, you are part of the largest association of graduate students of the UPCERS and the Nippon's graduates. Thanks to Ateneo de Manila. And a special remember to Father Jose Cruz, Vice Rector of the Ateneo de Manila. He was the main stone of this program. He gave us and gave you the light for this plot for achieve the success and today you receive the degree. Thank you very much, former Vice President Jose Cruz. Thanks to your professors in Manila and in Costa Rica and Maya and Isa. Today I like to reiterate some concept that I express in the United Nations General Assembly when the Secretary General of the United Nations present the jury's report in the middle of October. The COVID-19 pandemic is the result have left a troubled world. Inequities have grown and expressed in more poverty, more hunger, more malnutrition, and indifferent and recruitment cycles of conflict. Achieving harmony is made more difficult by the lack of the cooperation. 
The increase in this deprivation is direct consequence of the lack of solidarity in the today's world. The international context show an increase in the disinstitutionalization as well as the increase the mistrust both in the context of the emergence of the new and varied conflict, all of which had given aggravated by the pandemic. This show the profound need to build leaders for peace, to broaden education and empower new generation, and to broaden the knowledge for others. This is one of the role of the University for Peace. And you are the new leaders for peace. The role and this task are more important today than they ever been. The work and the progress of the University for Peace was clearly expressed in the report of the UN Secretary General. The UN Secretary General highlight how education facilitates the dialogue and exchange of ideas, how education creates opportunities for tolerance, civic and harmonious coexistence, and building of peaceful societies. Education built informed society with more opportunities for all. Conflict can be transformed through education. Likewise, education open opportunities for the cooperation. So, education makes it possible to break down inequities and facilitate the closing the gap, creating opportunities for sustainable and development and innovation. You as the new leader for peace, trained at the University for Peace, will be able to empower people by contributing to change the, envir the environmental in which they live, where they suffer from different types of conflict and discrimination. Through education, you will be able to empower people to break down myths and fears. With education, there, there are no be peace. Without education, it's impossible to achieve the peace. Education produces peace. Education enables an informed and tolerant na national and global citizen and reaffirms social cohesion and a strong institution. The University for Peace continues to carry out this work during the pandemic. Following Rigorous protocols and health prevention measures we have been able to continue to with our academic research and dissemination activities as well as seminars, conference and graduation. In some moment you are not happy with the awareness of prevent COVID but was necessary and we are very happy because in the university we don't have any case during your, your studies here. We very quick, quick adopted an hybrid model. You development this model. The university has enabled to continue the plot of training sustainable development goals and building human capitals capable to addressing the serious problem inherent from before and exacerbated by the pandemic. Globally, protectionism, nationalism and trade tension are on the rise. Similarly, there is a rise in authoritarianism, discrediting of democracy and the emergence of messianic populism. This weakness predicts the emergence of a new and deep conflict, more so in a context of the crisis of global and regional multilateralism. 
This crisis is destroying years, years of institutional building. Trust will be need to rebuild based on cooperation, as highlighted the Secretary General of the UN. The absence of cooperation make progress and peace impossible. We need more cooperation. Consequently, training leaders for peace who can understand the deep root of the conflict and who incorporate knowledge in the area of negotiation, mediation and prevention can place the foundation for an effective cooperation for the harmonious and better world. Global uncertainties generate more insecurity, and these are increasingly and accelerating. Putting the cities at the center makes it possible to understand how people base security, what makes development possible. Without sustainable development, there will be no peace. In the context of conflict and war, no human right can be exercised. There is no peace without development. There is no development without peace. And there is no lasting peace or sustainable development without respect for human rights and the rule of law. Building mutual trust and is indispensable for task. This can be learned. Building mutual trust is necessary to educate in that. We need to learn about that. It is possibly based on the concrete experience to learn lessons that allow progress to be made in building trust. Trust make institution, institution building and the development of effective cooperation possible. Trust is built through education. This is the role of the universities and in particular the role of the University for Peace in training new leader for peace. This is, will contribute to create it for more justice, sustainable, non-violent, progressive and harmonious world. One important thing the climate change is the main threat for the humanity. We need to protect the planet. Today, it is essential to take emergency measures to confront this, the greatest threat for the humanity and the planet. Fearful, the Sustainable Development Goal is essential as a part of Fearful of 2030 Agenda. This is a complex context full of uncertainties and difficulties. A shift of sustainable sustainability is essential. Solidarity is required to take necessary measures to address the new serious threats, including the pandemic. Without the vaccine solidarity, there will be no chance to defeat the pandemic containing it and saving millions of lives. Either we are all free of COVID-19 or no will be saved. More humanity is, re is required to guarantee the vaccine for all, in all the planets. Compassion is the key element for living together and for recognize each of other as a humans. The high level forum panel for culture of peace and nonviolence shows us the essential way to confront ideas, disescalate tensions, to confront the speech and the xenophobia. The culture of peace and nonviolence generate opportunities to move toward a better world, with progress through tolerance, peaceful and democratic coexistence and cooperation. 
The UPs has developed important actions at the global level. You know that, but it's important to, to put at least one sentence. The UPs is training leader for peace in countries larger and smaller, is stable countries and in a conflict zone, from China to Central America, from Costa Rica to Somalia, through the Balkans and Southeast Asia, fulfilling the mission assigned by the UN General Assembly 41 years ago in 1980 through the resolution 3555 where was created the University for Peace. Dear new graduates, congratulations again. You are part of the great family of Ateneo, Nippon, and UPs. Maintaining contact, best wishes. Please think if you want peace, work for peace. Thank you very much, Rector Rojas. Mr. Takejo Ogata, president of the Nippon Foundation, joins us virtually to share with us his message for the 14th cohort of Asian Peace Builders. Peace 世界的なパンデミックの影響を受けて本来できるはずだったフィールドワークであるとか対面の授業もなかなか困難だったと思っておりますでも皆さんの執念とそれから先生方のご努力によって今日無事に卒業まで今月来たこと本当に嬉しく思います皆さんにとって平和とは何か一度でもそのことを考えたことがあると思いますが平和というのは何人も争いごとがなくそして平穏無事に豊かに暮らしていくことそれが平和だと私は思っております最近地球上の至る所で紛争が勃発しておりますその結果大勢の人たちが避難民となったり大勢の人たちが命を亡くしたり大勢の人たちが身体不自由者になるというそして子どもたちが貧困の極みに突き落とされているという世界中には大変大きな問題が存在しておりますそれらの問題をあなた方は勉強したことを一つの糧とし世の中にたとえ一箇所でもいいから平穏で無事な地域を構築するそれがあなた方の役目ではないかと思っております あなた方が一人一人はその能力には限度がありますしかしながら人間というものは一人でできないことが二人集まり三人集まると十倍にも二十倍にもその効力能力力が発揮できる生き物でございます人間というものは決して一人では生きていけません コミュニティを形成しその中でお互いを助け合いながら新たな社会を構築していくことが人間としての役目だと思っておりますただそこにほんの少しだけ人間というのは欲望というものがございますそれをいかに律して自分の理性というものを全面に押し出すことができるか皆さんが学んだことであると思っております皆さんが卒業して 
これから本当に辛い世の中に出ていくのでしょうですがこのプロジェクトですでに先輩たちが400人近く世界の各地で活動しておりますどうかそのネットワークに率先して自分の名前を登録していただきたいそして仲間を求め世界のためにまた不幸な人々のためにまたは何かを求めている方々に自分たちの限りを尽くしそして世のため人のために頑張ってほしい日本財団はもちろん世界中でいろんな事業を展開しておりますもしかしたら皆さんとどこかでまたお目にかかることがあろうかと思いますその時は一緒に問題解決のために歩いていきたいと思いますし点であったものがラインでつながりそして面でつながるそういうふうな社会を構築のために頑張っていきたいと思います皆さんのご卒業を心からお祝い申し上げますありがとうございました Thank you very much Mr. Ogata 2021 is a special year as this is the first time that the Ateneo de Manila University is awarding the degree Master in Transdisciplinary Social Development. We have with us Dr. Jose Joel Canudai, Chair of the Department of Sociology and Anthropology to tell us more about this innovative transnational education program in social development. The disciplines of anthropology and sociology historically played significant roles in transforming the field of development from an expert-centered, growth-oriented, and disruptive program of change into a socially-oriented, culturally-sensitive, and people-based approach to enabling human progress. Through these transformative endeavors, the field of social development emerged as one of the more important innovations in practice, teaching, and scholarship on the idea of prosperity. In recent decades, however, social development as an academic field has faced scrutiny over its response to widespread integration of communities to international markets, growth-led globalization, and urbanization-driven development have drastically altered global social relations, leaving behind staggering human ecological impact on local social environmental landscapes as income disparities deepened and inequality sharpened, and organic ecosystems degraded. The stark contrast between massive concentration of global resources to the wealthy and corporate interests on the one hand, and intensifying impoverishment across the global south and the other, amid decades of global developmental initiatives, suggest a crisis in the development enterprise. The situation exposed the failure of long-standing social change models, driven development from above, below the center and outside the system, and of the alternative kind, but all working in compartmentalized fashion. Current conditions demand new thinking and practices of development that are non-dualistic, disjointed, and disconnected, but more collaborative, co-creative, and co-beneficial to both proponents and subjects of development. This new developmental approach must place people at the center of developmental endeavors while drawing in global and local knowledge across to coll collectively work towards the creation of shared prosperity founded on social justice, equity, and ecological sustainability. Such an approach requires a transdisciplinary perspective anchored on the social, cultural, and political conditions of the Global South. In partnership with the Asian Peace Builder Scholarship Program, the Department of Sociology and Anthropology of the Loyola Schools of the Ateneo de Manila University 
hopes to contribute to the pool of public intellectuals attuned to the ideals of global cooperation, people solidarity, and translocal social collaborations. As a transdisciplinary program, the Master in Transdisciplinary Social Development, or the MTSDEV, emphasizes the contribution of local communities, cultural bearers, traditional leaders, and indigenous elders, alongside academics and practitioners, in producing concepts, theories, categories, and understandings of development. In consonance with the collaborative spirit of transdisciplinarity, the MTSDEV brings together agents from varying spheres and scales of development work in teaching future social development practitioners, intellectuals, and leaders inclusivist models of development. The first cohort of MTSDEV and the succeeding graduates of the program will definitely expand Asian professional representations in addressing issues arising and affecting Asia and the broader regions of the Global South, guided by the principles of co-production of knowledge, co-production of benefits, and co-production of capacities in diverse social, political, and structural settings. Go forth, development practitioners and peace builders. Thank you very much, Dr. Kanudai. To introduce this year's keynote speaker, we have Dr. Maria Lucy Vilches, Vice President for the Loyola Schools of the Ateneo de Manila University. I have the honor of introducing this year's keynote speaker, Attorney Dishani Jayawira from Sri Lanka. Dishani Jayawira is the founding directress, program designer, and strategist of the Center for Peace Building and Reconciliation in Colombo, Sri Lanka. Conflict transformation in a country that has endured decades of civil war and tension between ethnic religious groups has been Dishani's mission. Dishani left the legal profession to heed a deeper calling to create a peaceful and just Sri Lanka. In the last 20 years, she has tirelessly been promoting non-violent communication and fostering understanding among various groups. The Center for Peace Building and Reconciliation, or CPBR, was established in 2013 by Dishani and Professor Jayanta Sinivaratna. The organization has been engaging the youth, women, community, and religious leaders. CPBR values community participation and understand that people on the ground are powerful shapers of social attitudes and behavior. CPBR encourages personal transformations that empower communities to seek structural and political change. Their interfaith work promotes compassion among Sinhalese Buddhists, Tamil Hindus, Muslims, and Tamil and Sinhalese Christians through dialogue, training in conflict analysis and transformation, and supporting clergy as they mobilize communities to experience the joy of interdependence and coexistence. The programs of CPBR have been instrumental in bridging religious and ethnic divide. Among the more popular projects of CPBR are Woman, Voice of Image, and Picturing Peace. Woman, launched in 2013, explore the role of women religious leaders and young girls in healing the body, mind, soul, and soil. The program sought to empower females through creative income generating endeavors. CPBR became known for employing creative methodologies that appeal to the youth and the greater public with voice of image and picturing peace. Dishani and her team introduced the use of photography as a means of communication among the youth in entrenched boundaries. 
largely based on the visual research methodology called Photo Voice, the photography projects allow members of the community to capture the beauty and diversity of Sri Lanka. The youth participants of these projects are rebuilding communities through the exchange of still images and collaborative meaning making. Attorney Jayawira serves in the Global Advisory Committees of Alliance for Peace USA and the Jesuit Refugee Care Services International in Malta. Her work has been supported by international organizations such as the Peace Support Network and Civic Funding Program. Dishani has been recognized for peace building initiatives in Sri Lanka. In 2012, she received the Peacemaker in Action Award by the Tannenbaum Network USA and was second runner up in the annual Coexist Prize by Coexist Foundation UK. The Center for Peace Building and Reconciliation in Colombo won the Niwano Peace Award for 2015 for its outstanding contribution in civil conflict resolution and reconciliation. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's keynote speaker, creative peace builder, and interfaith worker, attorney Dishani Jayawira. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Mr. Yohi Sasakawa, Chairman, the Nippon Foundation. Mr. Taka Jopita, President, the Nippon Foundation. Father Roberto Siap, the Society of Jesus, President, Attorney of Manila University. Rector Francisco Rojas, University for Peace. Dr. Maria Luz, Vice President for Loyola School, Attorney of Manila University. Members of the International Advisory Board, members of the faculty, parents, above all, graduates. First and foremost, I would like to share my deep gratitude with all of you for creating space for us to share our peace-building life with you. I would like to start with a journal entry. It is my inner dialogue which I decided to put on paper. On the day I said goodbye to my profession as a lawyer in 1997. Circles, cycles, and choices. We humans see and interpret the world in boxes and triangles. Our great grandmother, Mother Earth, interpreted and created the world as circles and cycles. Contradictions emerged in our civilization. Boxes, triangles versus circles and cycles. Today, I'm at a crossroad to choose one of them. What I choose will interpret who I am on this earth. Do I want to listen to the head of my intuition, gut, or in other words, heart? My mother said, brain knows how to calculate. If your calculations go wrong, you will blame yourself. But if you listen to your heart or gut and make the decision, there is nothing to blame. You just did what was right for you in that particular moment. If you are smart enough to use brain in order to, to implement your heart's decision, then you can embrace the feeling of happiness. Right in that particular moment, as well as one fine day when you look back. Yes, Samma, mother, I listened to intuition. I strongly said, do not box you in the system. This place is just fixing, not transforming. You are here just to strengthen what you are not believing. Or oh, it is just fixing what needs to be transformed. I made a choice because I want to explore what it means circles and cycles. Seven years of my journey in studying law, six months of living in courts, ended today. I do not know what I am going to do next. 
but I know what I do is what right for me in this moment. Yes, I live in this moment fully, totally and happily. This moment will take care of the next moment. That's how cycles are. Magic of life. This is who I am on this earth. September 18, 1997, Colombo. In this circles and cycles journey, today we as homo sapiens are at a crossroad. The world we crafted for earth life has fallen into deeper crisis. In this crucial moment, the path we choose as Homo sapiens will decide the life of the next phase of Mother Earth and the lives of our great-great-grandchildren. In this historic moment of human civilization, I am here speaking to some of the most important Homo sapiens who can make a contribution to the change process. I am blessed to be a part of your lives. I extend my deepest gratitude to all of you for being here with me to embrace who I am and who we are as a community. Today I stand before you representing the Center for Peace Building and Reconciliation, Home for Diversity Community, which was founded in 2002 with Professor Jayanta Senevidatna my life partner as well as my work partner in life. CPBR has grown beautifully to a level where it gave birth to three organized wings. Apina, Religions for Humanity, is an interfaith religious leader's coalition. Woman, Mahare Gahania, Heal the Soul, Soil, Body and Mind, is a coalition consisting of women religious leaders, women, women teachers, young women and young girls. And finally, Sanyok, We Choose to Live in Love, is an interfaith youth coalition. I am immensely grateful and humble to be standing here representing all of them because without them, I would not be who I am today. Whatever I share with you is a collective wisdom we acquired as a community who believes that interdependence is a philosophy and power with relationship is a technique. Dear graduates, this is a significant day in your life since it is the moment in which we celebrate what you have acquired as knowledge and skills. On the other hand, you are preparing yourselves to test the knowledge and skills you acquired through applying, reflecting, practicing and living. Therefore, I believe in sharing key realizations which I have explored, practiced and believed resulting from my living and experiencing in my life which I shared with myself, others and Mother Nature on this earth home. I hope it will be supportive in this particular threshold of your life. One of the core realizations I would like to share is the importance of self and self-practice in transformative processes. In any work, what we do, why we do what we do, when we do, and how we do what we do is the core chakra which turns the wheel 360 degrees in the transformation and change process. This realization helped me to keep on quest in my earlier career as a law professional and my life as a peace builder. Significantly, this quest was that made me critically look into life in the judiciary arena and the injustice I witnessed in the country led me to answer my inner calling to become who I am today. This realization is what made me tune into self-inquiry vibes as one of the key practices in life. I say it again, this realization is what made me tune into self-inquiry vibes as one of the key practices in life. 
always to stop and reflect again i'm saying always to stop and reflect what i do why i do how do i do it and when i do it again i'm saying what i do why i do how do i do it and when i do it more importantly ask the critical question if i am not practicing what i promote do i have the legitimacy to talk about this so promoted i would like to bring one of my favorite academic practitioners into this space john paul lederach writes in his moral imagination prefers Carl Rogers suggested that these things that are most personal are shared universally. I believe there is great merit to the idea, though it tends not to be practiced in formal academic writing. The disservice is this: when we attempt to eliminate the personal, we lose sight of ourselves, our deep intuition, and the source of source of our understandings. who we are and how we are in the world in doing so we arrive at a paradoxical destination we believe in the knowledge we generate but not the inherently messy and personal process by which we acquired it his argument in this chapter is how we could take me and my practice into the discourse of knowledge and wisdom production process especially in the area of peace building because we also came from the same system which we need to transform we too inherit all ill thinking and practices which we need to transform peace building relies on imagination our capacity to imagine something rooted in the challenges of the world yet capable of giving birth that which does not yet exist imagination is aesthetic and artistic making it to a reality is to not making it to a reality is not merely an academic or political act it is a spiritual act too the spiritual act begins from within my interpretation for peace builder is a person who has mastered the art of balancing the academic spiritual artistic political cultural ecological and emotional segments of life in order to heal oneself other and nature in my world justice is a huge component in healing in this journey i have met beautiful peace builders who never studied peace building or conflict transformation at an educational institution they experienced life in tuning into the reflective and learning and relearning mode producing wisdom through the messiness of evolution of a new life they mastered the skill of balancing the right and left brain they take nature as their greatest teacher again I like to draw your attention to my key realization the importance of self and self practice in transformative processes Next what I'm going to share with you are few ideas and two models we produce as a CPBR community who are open to reflect and learn and relearn through experiencing the massive messiness of evolution in other words these models emerged as a result of 20 years of exploration into cycles and cycle circles in life we as cpbr started our journey being very political and academic when we create a safer space for the messiness of evolution and innovation to guide oneself and the mission while being mindful that the center of all transformative processes are the actors who facilitate the transformative process we realized the importance of actors readiness 
to keep the ego aside and to be open to unlearn and relearn, to practice what they believe and promote. When we walked through that challenging journey, we realized Being only political and academic is not enough to be a concrete transformation practitioner. Then we experienced the connection between our imaginations for the world and the teachings of nature. Yes, trees, water streams, clouds, butterflies, bees, air, fire, soil became our teachers. When we try to understand and analyze the problems we are facing, we realize we are all wounded in psychological, physical, ecological, economic, political, social levels. Healing is the core in our analysis in order to, to contribute to our imaginations. Contribute to heal oneself, heal the other, and heal nature is our mission. The mission has been set on a tripod. It is dialogue, action, change. Dialogue is our key entering point. We use diverse tools to initiate dialogues, such as faith, visual art, ecological arts, art and craft, skill development, etc. Dialogue go goes as a cycles as well as a spiral. It starts with inner dialogue. This is my focus in these few minutes. We believe self-discovery is the key to self-transformation. Self-transformation is the base to reimagination. Imagination is the key to peace building. This is a spiral which is never ending, but it does not exhaust us either. This is the transformative Mandela model which gives a logical and strategic base for our work. As I shared, healing oneself, other and nature is our mission. A journey of transformation can start at any place, but in initiatives we start at inner and intra landscape. What it means is essentially me and my community. As an example, if the participant is a Buddhist monk, he and the other monks and his community is the first landscape we need to focus and transform. How we support oneself and others to initiate self-dialogue, inner dialogue, in order to initiate a transformative journey? It is an aesthetic act too. Most common question we hear is, instead of inner talks, how we could master the skill of inner dialogue to rediscover ourselves. Because we mastered the inner talks, think deeply, discover. Are you engaged in inner dialogues or inner talks? Dialogue is to understand and develop empathy-rooted relationships with oneself, others and nature. What do we do most of the time? inner dialogues or inner talks. From this point onwards, you can be a witness of your own mind. Are you going through an inner talk process or are you going through an inner dialogue process? This may be a lifelong assignment which needs to be mastered in the journey of transformation. Our Mandela model starting in this place designing diverse activities to support humans to transform their inner and intra-community landscape will lay down the foundation to do collective imagination and actions to contribute towards our imagination. Next segment is healing and harmony landscape where inter-community dialogues and actions take place. Next segment is learning, unlearning and relearning landscape this is where we introduce academic as well as practitioner knowledge banks and skills. I will explain using the next model what we do here because it is relevant for you. Here, for Apinam means interfaith dialogue leaders, wisdom space. For women, earthing space. For youth, beyond lab. 
for all language lab these are the three segments where we invest our time energy and resources impact and outputs of the inputs of about three levels can be measured in the next segments as a result of engaging in a transformative process the individual and collective actions and initiatives are happening under seeds of hope Humans who are initiating, facilitating and leading are gratitude craftivists. We wanted to introduce a new name for peace builders. When we reflect why we do what we do, the way we do those things, we realize all our acts of love and gratitude. We realized we need a new vocabulary because linguistics play a huge role in transformative processes. Vibes of Humanity is our media unit. They will be promoting and celebrating the existence of gratitude craft events and the Seeds of Hope initiatives. Instead of countering existing narrations or trends, Vibes of Humanity will carve the space for gratitude craft events and Seeds of Hope to spread the moral imagination we are imagining through actions. In all levels, Earth care is the key thread to weave the painting. Nature being our greatest teacher, contributing to nourish, protect and celebrate her is our ultimate mission. Contribute to recreate this earth home which works for all, not for a few homo sapiens. In all our actions and reactions, what we are trying to do is to develop skills, knowledge, spiritual and emotional capacities to identify, accept, respect, nourish, promote and celebrate diversity. Throughout the process, the importance of self and self-practice in transformative processes is a key element. All segments are parallel operating as circles, cycles and spirals. Second model is where we develop academic and practitioner capacities under the learning, unlearning and relearning landscape in Mandela model. All humans who are with us are learning two key subjects which are in the inner circle of the model. Those are conflict transformation as a technique to choose the opportunity of the conflict to achieve positive outcomes. The other one is nonviolent communication as a tool to develop communication skills, to transform conflicts and to facilitate transformative journeys. While these two subjects are common subjects for all, any person pick another one subject or many in outer cycle in order to practice what we learn in the inner cycle in day-to-day -day worldly life. Permaculture and balancing life, spiritual psychology and balancing life, physical space designing and balancing life, art, craft, culture and balancing life, social entrepreneurship and balancing life are the other life skills. In both models, we create safer space for people from diverse faith, ethnic, regional, caste, educational, economic, spiritual, age, and sexual orientations to come together to walk through learning, unlearning, relearning processes, to craft and recraft oneself who master the skill to operate from the place where empathy rooted, deep love sprouting. As a community who try their level best to keep integrity at the core of their existence, few questions we would like to pose before we wrap up. In humanitarian and transformative spheres, are we, given, are we given the focus on the importance of self and self-practice? We produce academics who are very sound in knowledge and skills. We transformed passion into pa profession and then profession into academic. This evolution was very important and needed in intellectual, spiritual, social, economic, and political spheres of life. But 
moving beyond that, the important question we ask ourselves is, are we practicing what we promote in our day-to-day -day life in order to recraft our being accordingly? Life is about choices. When we make choices, when we make the choices is when we express where we place our integrity. This becomes a personal reference point for an actor related to everything that he or she does. It is not about brand names, taglines and logos which the system gives. For me, it is about who I am. The social, cultural, psychological and spiritual nudity I experience when I stand in front of a mirror all alone. For that, it does not matter what I read, what I said, what I achieved and what certificates I have. For that, what I need is courage, curiosity and the capacity to face my brutal truths and fears. Capacity to accept me as I am while being ready to transform to experience a better version of me, referring to my imagination for the world. Capacity to balance head, heart and belly brains to take actions to heal oneself, others and nature. I would like to conclude by sharing one of my mantra from one of my favorite humans who lived on this earth. Humans have a gift and a skill. They mastered the skill, but they forgot the gift. Skill is analytical thinking and the gift is intuition. Albert Einstein. I wish you all find the courage to balance the gift and the skill because everything is about balancing. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Dishani Jayawira, for that insightful address. May I now call on the representative of APS-14, Mr. Toshiki Sakiyama from Japan, to give the farewell address on behalf of the graduating class. Good morning and good evening. Mr. Yohei Sasakawa, Chairman of the Nippon Foundation. Mr. Takeju Ogata, President of the Nippon Foundation. Father Roberto Yap of the Society of Jesus, President of the Ateneo de Manila University. Rector Francisco Rojas Aravena, Rector of the University for Peace. Honored guests, professors and teachers, program coordinators, friends and families, and the fellow graduates of the APS Cohort 14. I am absolutely honored to be representing the graduating batch of APS Cohort 14. On behalf of graduates, I would like to thank you for joining us on this auspicious occasion. Congratulations, APS Cohort 14, for finishing this dense double degree program. In these 18 months, we survived a lot. The ALCC English program two intense summer intercessions at Ateneo, studies at UPs, and super busy capstone project, and for some of you, thesis writing. No more Zoom classes, nor Google Docs, nor Google Slides. Now, we no longer need to calculate the time difference between Costa Rica and Manila. Looking back at the time when the program started, we were uncertain of how the program will be delivered, whether we could fly to Costa Rica because of the global pandemic. Some were able to fly from the beginning. Some had to wait anxiously for the visa approval. Our Myanmar friends also went through instability caused by the coup and the continuing political turmoil. Not only in the textbook, we studied inequalities and injustices, but we ourselves experienced inequalities and injustices affecting us caused by the political and the social structures of the current world that intentionally separates one from another. Still, the program continued. In classrooms for some, 
and on Zoom for the others. During the day for those on campus and during night for those in the opposite side of the world. And on this milestone day of graduation, we can proudly say that we successfully managed to adapt to this new, new norms of hybrid modality and uneasiness of online and offline communication. For me, the flood of group work assignments in the APS program was a good test of our adaptability to the new norm. Because of the new challenges, time difference, distance, online delivery, and indirect communication, we listened to each other more carefully. Not only we thought about ideas and rationale for assignments, but also we cared about the personal situation of the peers. And this simple act of listening and thinking about others becomes tremendously difficult when you're busy, anxious, or preoccupied with something else. Group assignments may be a small deal compared to the social issues and opportunities each of us wants to engage in after graduation. But it is this empathic, generative listening, listening with care, empathy, patience, and imagination that allows us to overcome differences in ideas and perspectives, and eventually allows us to discuss constructively the difficulties, inequalities, and injustices. We walked through this challenging journey, but we didn't come here alone. We are greatly indebted to everyone who supported us during the program. The Nippon Foundation, university departments, professors, and program coordinators made the best effort to keep the program running in hybrid mode and enabled us to pursue our academic journey. We are also indebted to our partners, families, and friends who always show understanding and acceptance of ourselves and who give us inspirations and motivations. I would like to express our sincere gratitude for what you have provided to us for our own, our own empowerment. Now that we graduate, it is our turn to offer what we have received. As peace builders, we may be quick in adding to our agenda pressing social development issues. But please allow me to include in our mission the effort of listening and the effort of extending care and support, empathy and encouragement with humbleness and acknowledging own vulnerability to those just around you, to the people whom you care the most, especially in times when things don't work out as you expected. I think that is the way to begin the collective path for the unity in diversity for peace. Once again, congratulations to graduates and their families. And I truly look forward to the reunion day in the future when all 30 of us can gather together in one place and drink, eat, and chat. Good luck in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Toshiki. We will now have the awarding of the academic degrees from the Ateneo de Manila University and the University for Peace. We have with us the Dean of the School of Social Science, Dr. Zarina Saloma Akpedonu, to call out the names of the graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor of presenting to you the graduates of the Asian Peace Builder Scholarship Class of 2021. The cohort will be recognized as dual degree graduates of Master in Transdisciplinary Social Development of the Ateneo de Manila University and the respective MA programs from the UN Mandated University for Peace. Aldo Marciano Caligis. Toru Arai
Mark Anthony Articulo. Ataur Razak. Na with on the cheat. Da to su. Ujia Muni Kiyomi Delosha de Soisa. Maria Sheena Elaine de los Reyes. Lorenzo Espacio. Shohei Hasegawa. Sujit Shivanta Ratnayakes Hitiachi Karagalage. John Jeffrey Seng. Mayuna Kajino. Kin Ni La Ko. Lapai Kelly Nang Aung. Gudawata Isuru Madushanka Lianage. Yoshiko Miyashita. Ayako Mori. Kasumi Moritani. Yuji Nemoto. Muni Ban Nien. Kazuki Otaki. Pan Su Aung. Miki Sakiyama. Toshiki Sakiyama. Linda Tanaket Saku. Chen Pao Ngok. Shimpei Watanabe. Wataru Yamasaki.
Emi Yoshinaga. Thank you, Dean Bopip Saloma Akpedunu. We call on Rector Rojas to officially pronounce the conferment of the degree from the University for Peace to be followed by Father Roberto Yap of the Society of Jesus to pronounce the completion of requirements of the Master in Transdisciplinary Social Development degree from the Ateneo de Manila University undergraduate. Dear students, I now pronounce this candidate as completing their requirement of their UPS program and obtain the Master of Art degree from the University for Peace, established by the General Assembly of the United Nations. Congratulations! Now you are graduate of the University for Peace. Congratulations again. I now pronounce these candidates as having successfully completed the academic requirements of the degree Master in Transdisciplinary Social Development of the Ateneo de Manila University. Congratulations! Congratulations to the first cohort of the Master in Transdisciplinary Social Development. Do well, APS 13.